Hello, this is part three of chapter 10, the cell division chapter for General Biology 1. We're going to start in here with uh, events of the cell cycle, that is stages of interphase and mitosis. Okay, so first off, we have these diagrams right here showing what's going on during this process of the cell cycle. And we have photos of the plant cells and the animal cells going through these various stages. Now in lab you had to be able to identify these stages of interphase through telophase looking through the microscope, looking at the plant cells and the animal cells the way they appeared in the microscope. Here for lecture you're going to need to be able to identify these stages of interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase by looking at the diagrams. Um, on the test, I'm going to have a set of diagrams. They're going to be jumbled around. You'll need to be able to identify which stage you're looking at. Okay, so we have up here at the top, we have interphase. And during an interphase, you notice you have an intact looking nucleus. You can see the nucleolus within there. And the nuclear envelope is, is, uh, is intact. Okay, you also have, since this is an animal cell, you have centrioles that are migrating to either end of the cell. Then, we go into prophase. Now, we're not going to worry about early versus late. We're just going to look at prophase. During prophase, the chromatin has coiled up and condensed and formed the chromosomes. So, you notice here and here, chromosomes have formed, and the nuclear envelope <coughs> is dissolving. So it's shown as a broken down line. And then also the spindle fibers are forming. Move into metaphase. Meta means middle. And the chromosomes are lined up around the middle of the cell. Or another way of saying that, the chromosomes are lined up around the equator of the cell. Now keep in mind the cell is a three-dimensional structure. It's not flat like the sheet. So that means the chromosomes really aren't forming just a straight line across the center of the cell but they're forming a ring around the middle of the cell, thus a ring around the equator of the cell. So, metaphase, middle, chromosomes are lined up around the middle of the cell, around the equator of the cell, and we see the spindle fibers attached to the chromosomes going back to either end of the cell. Now then, anaphase, during anaphase, the centromeres of course, that's a dense area that holds two chromosomes together. The centromeres have split, and the two sister chromatids are being pulled away from each other. Now, you notice this V shape. Okay, that chromosome is being pulled along by the centromere, and the arms of the chromosome are just dragging along behind it. So that's why you get that V shape. Then in telophase, the chromosomes have reached opposite ends of the cell. They begin to uncoil back towards chromatin. New nuclear envelopes begin to form around those chromosomes. And the big thing right here is cytokinesis occurs, which cytokinesis is the process of splitting the cytoplasm, so dividing the cytoplasm, so we split this into two new cells. Okay, then these two new cells. This is a cycle, so we're back to our starting place. We're back to interphase. So, here we see another set of diagrams, and you notice right up here in the upper left hand corner you have a solid intact nucleus. Then, move right here. This would be prophase. The chromosomes have formed from the chromatin and the nuclear envelope is dissolving. Then next phase is metaphase. The chromosomes are lined up across the middle of the cell and the spindle fibers are attached to the centromeres uh, from either side. Actually they're attached to the kinetochores on the centromeres from either side. Okay, Then move to anaphase. During anaphase the uh, sister chromatids have, uh, the centromeres have split, and the sister chromatids are being pulled away from each other. And it forms that V shape as they're pulled along. 
Then here we have telophase. Chromosomes have reached opposite ends of the cell. The chromosomes are uncoiling back towards chromatin like they were here in interphase. The nuclear envelope is forming around those chromosomes and we get cytokinesis occurring. Cytokinesis is splitting the cytoplasm so that it divides that into two new cells. Okay, in terms of haploid and diploid, these cells are going to start out as diploid and with mitosis there will be no changes in the chromosome number and so this will be diploid it will be 2n at every one of these stages so it doesn't change okay interface we have a cell that's diploid now just a side note in some cases certainly not in in animals but in um, other organisms plants and some of the uh, fungi, some of the uh, algae, you can have haploid cells that can go through mitosis. Um, <clears throat> so we're mainly going to consider this as uh, the idea of how this is going to work in the animal cells in which if you have mitosis going on in animal cells you're going to start out with a diploid cell and it will be diploid all the way through the process. So during interphase, the cells are not dividing. You have intact nuclear membrane. The nucleus appears dense and solid. And the DNA is in the form of chromatin. Okay, and the chromosomes in the, in the form of chromatin are single-stranded at the beginning of interphase, and they become double-stranded during that S substage or that synthesis substage of interphase so the chromosomes are double stranded at the end of interphase. Uh, also the centrioles in animal cells will become duplicated during interphase. Okay, prophase. Prophase, the cells are diploid and we have double stranded chromosomes. Now, during prophase, the chromosomes are going to form from the chromatin with the aid of a protein called condensin. And condensin, the name pretty much tells you what it's going to do. Condensin, this is a protein that will condense the chromatin to chromosomes. Uh, the nuclear membrane is going to dissolve. The nucleolus, or plural, nucleoli, will disappear. Spindle fibers are going to form. The spindle fibers are the also called the mitotic spindle apparatus, and the spindle fibers are composed of microtubule proteins. Okay, let's look at this mitotic spindle apparatus in plants and animals. And we have this MTOC, that's an abbreviation for this big old long name, microtubule organizing center. And in plants, the microtubule organizing center has a very low level of organization and it doesn't really have any distinct structure. But in animals, the microtubule organizing center is highly organized and highly structured, consisting of centrioles, paracentriolar material, and asters. Okay, now these centrioles these are highly organized structures. They are cylinders that consist of nine sets of three microtubules per set. And then pericentriolar material. This consists of these threads, of these thread-like proteins that are called fibrils. The asters, these are short microtubules that radiate out from the microtubule organizing center into the surrounding cytoplasm. And it's thought that these asters act sort of like an anchor to kind of hold everything in place. So here's a sketch of, uh, of an animal cell and our microtubule organizing center. And within that microtubule organizing center, you have the centrioles. You have this pericentriolar material, this kind of fibrous protein type material. And then you have these little short microtubules radiating out from the 
the uh, microtubule organizing center, and these are referred to as asters because kind of like the petals on an aster flower just radiate out from the center. Same thing right here. These short microtubules radiate out from that microtubule organizing center. Okay, and then we have the spindle fibers, which are long microtubules that come out here and latch onto the chromosomes. Now in the plant, you don't really have a distinct structure on that microtubule organizing center. I think it's cut off down here at the bottom. It says MTOC, no distinct. Right below that it should say structure, but I believe that's cut off. Okay, so we do have a microtubule organizing center at either end of the plant cell, but it just does not have the level of organization that we see in the animal cells. Okay, it's just kind of a dense area. Okay, not really not really made up of distinct materials like in the animal cell. Okay, metaphase. Still diploid, and we still have double-stranded chromosomes. Now during metaphase, chromosomes are lined up individually on the equator of the cell, and that's referred to as the metaphase plate. Microtubules are attached to the kinetochores on either side of the chromosome. Here's our diagram showing this idea of the metaphase plate, this ring around the center of the, of the cell. Um, we have the microtubules attached to the kinetochores. We have the microtubule organizing centers at either end of the cell with centrioles, the asters, short uh, microtubules, paracentriolar material. Okay. We're not going to worry about distinguishing between kinetochore microtubules and polar microtubules. We'll just go with the idea of microtubules or the spindle, uh, spindle apparatus, spindle fibers. Okay, anaphase. Cells are diploid, but the chromosomes are now single-stranded. So the stuff of diploid and haploid has nothing to do with single-stranded or double-stranded chromosomes. It has to do with the question, do we have homologous chromosomes in the same cell? Do we have a copy of the chromosome that came from dad and a copy of the chromosome that came from mom in the same cell? So during anaphase, the centromeres are going to split and sister chromatids will be pulled towards opposite ends of the cell. Now during telophase, the cells are diploid. We have single-stranded chromosomes. Chromosomes are going to reach opposite ends of the cell, and new nuclei begin to form with everything that that entails. That means new nuclear membranes will begin to form. Chromosomes start to uncoil back to chromatin, and new nucleoli start to appear. Another thing that happens in plant and animal cells during uh, telophase is cytokinesis. Cyto cytokinesis occurs during telophase in plant and animal cells. This is division of the cytoplasm. This differs between plant and animal cells. This is really the big difference between plant and animal cells for the cell cycle. In animal cells, cytokinesis uh, occurs by formation of a cleavage furrow. Because animal cells are surrounded by a flexible membrane, this membrane pinches into two new cells and the proteins that are involved are the actin protein filaments and the myosin motor proteins, these will collect around the equator of the cell and begin to constrict the plasma membrane. This actin and myosin are the same proteins that we use for a muscle contraction. Okay, so here's the diagram showing the animal cell and you have this indentation right here that is called a cleavage furrow. You have this ring of actin and myosin uh, proteins around the center of the cell that's constricting that cell just like in a muscle contraction. In plant cytokinesis, it's a little different because there's a rigid wall. It's not flexible. It forms what's called a cell plate. The cell plate develops then into a new cell wall. And remember those vesicles from earlier in the semester? Vesicles that come from the Golgi complex. They're going to fuse together and these vesicles contain cell wall material. Okay, here's our diagram showing plant cell uh, cytokinesis, vesicles lined up around the equator, they fuse together, 
it forms a double layer membrane with cell wall material in, in between that membrane, forming a new cell wall.